Hello and welcome to Winnell's exclusive extended highlights of Winchester City FC against Forley AFC here in the Wessex Premier League at the Den Plan. As always, I'm joined by Yannick Piedekowski, a massive fan of Winchester City FC. Now, Yannick, what do Winchester have to do to beat Forley today? Well, a bit more like last week. Um, we were there, of course, last week at the Vars game, 4-0 uh, up by half-time. Uh, even the Orchard manager, if you read the press this week, said he would pay to watch Winchester play football. They were that good. Um, we were saying at half-time ourselves, it was flowing, it was quick football, it was attacking football. Any mistakes that were made, bang, Winchester pounced on them. I mean, we were saying that uh, Jamie White could have had five by half-time. He hit the post twice, as well as scoring. Chris, Charlie Smith, and their attacking options at the moment is ridiculous. But they're playing against a 40 side that is much improved from the one I saw last season. Finished second from bottom. They, as you said yourself before we went on doing this, 3-3 three, three against Romsey, very creditable. So this will be a tough test for Winchester, but if they play anything like they did last week, I can only see one outcome. I really can. Yeah, and uh, if we look at the table as well, Winchester, they're now six points behind Bermonton, but Bermonton have played four games in hand. So obviously Winchester can close the gap once again. Well, let's look at it this way, OK? You'd rather be in Winchester's position, four games in hand, and you have now the time to basically close that six-point gap and at the moment, Winchester have a Winchester, sorry, have a very big thing on their side: momentum. When you have a momentum in football, everything just seems to fall into place nicely. And at the moment, I think Winchester have that momentum. And now we've also now the big news on the Vars draw and everything that's happening. There is real momentum about the club at the moment, and everything is going along nicely. I really do think Winchester will close that gap. And you use that word momentum as well. I suppose momentum brings you form, and with Winchester at the moment, five wins out of six is pretty impressive form for. A for a team that should be getting promoted this season. I'll just say one thing, it's no better time to support Winchester City at the moment. You're seeing good attacking football, you're seeing good defensive football as well because they're not conceding many. I mean, I mean, last week I did say on commentary I was annoyed that they conceded right at the death. Credit with credit's due to Allsford, great headed goal from Mike Every. Uh, but I mean, Ryan Goss and Guy Butters will be absolutely gutted they conceded one. So they want to keep a clean sheet today. That is the one other thing they'll be wanting to do is keep a clean sheet. Yeah, Winchester beat Allsford to go through to the second round proper of the FA Vars Trophy, but they did win in the last league outing against Hayling United. It was a 9-0 thrashing at the Hayling College ground. Now, Guy would obviously want to keep this kind of league form running as well, oh. aside from the cup. OK, let's look at two things. One, your bread and butter is always the league. The league is your bread and butter. Bill Shankly said it many moons ago. Liverpool, they loved winning cups, but the bread and butter was always the league. Cups are great things, but it's the league is what you want because that's where you get your form from. Week in, week out, you get your wins going. So basically, yeah, the league is the most important thing for Winchester City. And as you quite already said, they want to get promoted this year. So the league is the most important thing. Definitely. If we have a look at the uh, Winchester players warming up now, there's a good spirit amongst the team, isn't there? Well, confidence, isn't it? it? Winning breeds confidence. And they had this great feeling of, come on, let's get on the pitch, let's score some more goals and play good attacking football. So, yeah, they've got in good spirits and why not? Now, if we mentioned the players as well. There's uh, Ryan Goldsney over in goal at the moment. He's been a massive player for Winchester this well, season. Well, I call he? him safe hands, don't I? Because I don't think there's a better pair of hands in the Wessex League. I wonder if he'll be wearing that fetching goalkeeping top that he wears. I mean, no wonder he's been keeping clean sheets with the amount of goalkeeping top he's been wearing. It's hideous, it really is. But no, he's the best keeper in the Wessex League for me. There's no doubt about that. Very good in the air. And of course, last week, he made a couple of brilliant saves um, near the end where the Oxford put a bit of pressure on and he made a couple of great saves, you know, what I call showboat saves where he put out his hand out to save uh, from long range. Very, very good goalkeeper. Very good goalkeeper. And one of the players incidentally over there is Jamie White. Now, the big question remains, we ask this question week in, week out, is Jamie White going to be staying at Winchester for long? Well, we all hope so. Uh, I haven't seen a goal scorer as good as him since Andrew Forbes. And Andy Forbes was something special at this football club. He's as good as Andy Forbes. Uh, Andy Forbes is probably better than him in the air, but I've never seen a striker who finishes so accurately. I mean, he's left foot. I mean, I, I nicknamed him, Deny the Viper, because he weaves his way in and out of trouble and bang, he strikes with, denim, with deadly venom. Uh, there's no better striker, I don't think, at the moment than the 
in the Wessex League than Jamie White. Absolutely lethal. And some, and he's last week. His funny thing, his goals last week were very much tappings. He got himself in the right positions, and all these harder chances he hit the post with, which is quite incredible. But no, nah, he's the best striker in the league for me. No mm. doubt about that. And if you want to see some footage of last week's game, you can look at Sam Ashton's uh, coverage of the game on the Winner website. So. You'll be joining me in the commentary box as always, <laughs> as uh, things are getting started here at the club already. Your predictions for the game then before we start? I'm going to go for Winchester win. Um, if I've got to go for a score, I'll go 3-1 to Winchester. Winchester City unchanged from the hailing victory one week ago. Jamie White up front with Dominic Allen. Jamie White, 36 goals in 20 appearances this season. Charlie Smeaton on the left with Chris Mason and Tom Dunford in the centre, puts a Plisky on the right. In defence, James Embry, Lee Mills and Mike Byrne in the centre, Connie McCarthy on the right, and Gosney in goal. Let's have a look at the Fawley side. Steve Hall and Aaron Bloxall up front. Then we've got Justin Granson, Mark Parnell, Adam Wiltshire and Sam Wiltshire in midfield. With Nick Lane, Callum Earl, Kieran Earl and Sam Longman in defence with John Page in goal. So Fawley dressed in the light blue, dark blue attire with Winchester in their famous reds. Winchester shooting from right to left here in this first half Wessex Premier League clash. So the referee is about to get the game underway. Fawley will kick off. Should be a great game of football. Fingers crossed for Winchester. Here we go again. Here. And the game kicks off. Immediately... Fawley of the ball, being along high, it'll be cleared away by Conor McCarthy. In this uh, Denplan City ground, a nice crowd here today for the game. Winchester and Gosney giving Byrne his marching orders and we'll take the free kick for Winchester. Long high ball once again. Chased down by Dunford. A right hand side, here's White now. Over to Dom Pitterpli and White will give away and the referee's given a goal kick. Getting the players forward once again, long throw. And the way by Bloxall, Aaron Bloxall, the Fawley strike along the partnership with Steve Hall. Now here is Hall on the shoot, he goes for goal and it's just wide. Gosney had it covered though, Yannick. He did have it covered, but there is a warning sign there for Winchester. He had time, weighed up his options. Good strike, but didn't really trouble Gosney, if we're going to be honest about it. But there we go. With Bloxhill. Back to Longman now. Still kept on the pitch by Wiltshire, Sam Wiltshire. It's crossed infield. Oh, and Hanson couldn't get there. But here is Granderson on this side again. Back to the captain, Callum Earl. Oh, into the box. In the way is Wiltshire. Chased down by Pulitzer Plisky. Pulitzer Plisky might just clear this one. He clears it away, but it's not too bad as far as Dunford. Now, Dunford. Too far into no man's land. It'll be cleared, but Dom Allen does well. And Jamie White's involved now. Jamie White's going to battle hard for this one, but he loses out. Locks all. Now, here is Dom Allen. He's got Jamie White to his left. Here is Jamie White. Poor first touch, but he still has the ball. Here he is, he's got players with him, he's got Puts a Plisky with him, but Jamie White turns him brilliantly and he gets the corner. Mason with the corner. Oh, oh and Connor. Connor, McCarthy. Connor McCarthy had the chance there on the far side. Hey, he's going to go for a goal kick. Yeah, four players on this near side against Puts a Plisky around here. But anyway, ball's delivered long and wide. Over to us, Earl. Who beats Smeaton? He gets the ball into the box and here's Blocks Hill, but Gosney will claim it. That was a dangerous ball there, Yannick. It was a dangerous ball and another little warning side there for Winchester. They get the ball right. I mean, thank God for Ryan Gosney coming out and having, as I say, safe hands. But another little warning Free side there. Free kick. Given. Sorry Yannick, for interrupting you there and the referee wants the ball played back. That's OK, I'm used to it. <laughs> 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 but no, it's it, another warning sign there and when you still got to concentrate for the whole 90 minutes. Long ball up to Granderson, here we go. On this far side, he's going to take on Mills. And it's gone for a goal kick to Winchester. Locks on and Hall in the box with him. Granderson goes the easy way and plays it back into the left back lane. Great work. Oh, and now White's got a chance here. White's chasing lane hard. That's a lovely last-ditch tackle by Lane. What a brilliant tackle. 
Alan Hart and sneak your heart out. Yes, That's indeed. Ah, fantastic. And the referee is blown for a free kick. A, we've got a fire going on. It's all happening here at the Denplan <laughs> City Ground today. Is that a fire or a bomb fire? I'm not quite 100% sure, Yannick. I think it's a bomb fire. A bomb fire. I'll just say it's a bomb fire. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope it's a bomb fire. Yeah, here we go again. Jamie White now. Chasing hard. White. This is Mason. Back of the way. It's going to be cleared away by Page. Lovely first touch by uh, Hall here. It's a lovely boy. And here we go again on this side here. Wiltshire, lovely one too, and Wiltshire will chase hard, but uh, it's too far, and, and the referee's given a free kick for Fawley. Referee's very whistle happy in this game at the moment. So Mason will take the free kick. Mills again in the penalty area. Allen White, screen on this far, on this near side. The number 15. Mason in towards. Was that? that was uh, Smeaton there. Does not seem to happen yet at the moment for Winchester. They just, you know, they just not seem to get into uh, out of first gear at the moment. And that sounds strange for me to say, but it just doesn't look like how. Screen's got time and pace, and Alan will claim it. He, oh, I think it was in a yard offside there, but he's but he's got the ball. Here's Alan. He's got Mason in front of him. And here is Mason. He might have a cracker, you know, but he doesn't. It's Jamie White with a great chance. Jamie White and yeah. scores. Jamie White has scored again for Winchester. And this is congratulated by all the players. Fully look at themselves. But they are one goal to nil down here in the Wessex Premier League. Great goal. Great goal. Um, I said they needed a bright spark to get them into the game. And guess who it was? Jamie White. Uh, do you know, he's very honest there. Very honest. Uh, after We've uh, 19 minutes played here. Guy Butters celebrating the players, telling him to get the ball up front as much as possible. So Smeaton rather, Smeaton with the ball. He takes him on here and he's still going. He's going to go down. Referee penalty! Referee is given the penalty. 21 minutes played. Well, I'm sorry, but he done, he's done that all himself, Charlie Smeaton. Brilliant work, great run. What a fantastic run and Smeaton gets tackled by two players, pushed off the ball. Penalty to Winchester and puts a Plisky will stand up and take the honours. So here we go, Winchester puts a Plisky. He's already scored two goals already from the penalty spot in the last three three weeks. He has indeed. Puts the Don't ball on the spot. Fully manages too happy. He's not on the far side. Oh, oh and uh, I don't know if you're getting this. The match is going over to the Fawley manager, Paul Wiltshire, and I think he's going to have a quick chat with him and explain to him why he's given the penalty. I don't know, is he going to send him to the stands? Where, where, where would he Wait, send him to the stands? Exactly, yeah, exactly, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> well, they did this, uh, Guy Butters had this early in the season where they told him to go over the, over the uh, guardrail. We can Ooh. still give out orders. <laughs> Here we Bert go. Bert against John Page. 